Book One, Chapter Eight, Concert and the Tiger. I propose that she herself come to Moscow, and appear on TV. Just think, Anastasia, with your beauty, you could easily be a world-class fashion or photo magazine model. And at this point. I realized that she was no stranger to earthly matters. Like all women, she delighted in being a beauty. Anastasia burst out laughing. A world-class beauty, huh? <laughs> she echoed my question and then, like a child, began to frolic about, prancing through the glade like a model on a catwalk. I was amused at her imitation of a fashion model, placing one foot in front of the other and turn as she walked, showing off imaginary outfits. Finding myself getting into the act, I applauded and announced, and now ladies and gentlemen, your attention please, performing before you will be that magnificent gymnast second to none, that incomparable beauty, Anastasia. This announcement tickled her fancy even more. She ran out into the middle of the glade and executed an incredible flying somersault. First forward, then backward, then to the side, both left and right then an amazingly high leap into the air. Grasping a tree branch with one hand, she swung herself around it twice before flinging her body over to another tree. After yet another somersault, she began to bow coquittishly to my applause. She began to bow coquittishly to my applause. And she ran off out of the glade and hid behind some thick bushes. Anastasia peep, smiling out from behind them as though they were a theater curtain, and patiently awaiting my next announcement. I remembered a videotape I had of some of my favorite songs being performed by popular artists. I would watch it occasionally in the evening in my cabin aboard ship. I had this tape in mind, but not with the thought that Anastasia would actually be able to reproduce anything from it. As I announce, ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the star singers of our current stage and a performance of their top hits. Your attention, please. Oh, how wrong I had been in my estimate of her abilities. What happened next, I could not possibly have predu predicted. No, not, no sooner had Anastasia made her entrance from behind her improvised curtains then she launched into the authentic voice of Ala Pagoshova. No, it wasn't just a parody or an imitation, but Ala herself effortlessly conveying not only her voice, but her annotations and emotions as well. But an even more amazing feature was to come. Anastasia accentuated particular words adding something of her own, infusing the song with her own supplemental intonations so that Ala Pokachova's own performance, which before it seemed nobody else could even begin to surpass, now called forth a whole new range of additional feelings, illuminating the images even more clearly and a magnificently executive overall performance of the song. Once live, 
an artist alone conveys this all through his home. He loved an actress, he thought. Flowers were her love, fresh grown. He went and sold his big home, sold every canvas he owned. And with the money, he bought a whole field of flowers, fresh grown. Anastasia put particular emphasis on the word canvas. She screamed out this word in fright and surprise. A canvas is an artist's most prized possession. Without it, he can no longer create. And here, he is giving up the most precious thing he owns for the sake of his loved one. Later, as she sang the words, then she went off on the train. Anastasia tenderly portrayed the artist in love, looking longingly at the departing train, which was carrying off his loved one forever. She portrayed his pain, his despair, his perplexed state of mind. I was too shaken by everything I had seen and heard to applaud at the end of the song. Anastasia bowed, anticipating the applause and hearing none, launched into a new song with even more enthusiasm. She performed all of my favorite songs in the same order they had been recorded on the videotape. In every single song which I had heard so many times before was now even clearer and more meaningful in her redemption. Upon completing the last song on the tape, still hearing no applause, Anastasia retreated backstage, too dumbfounded to speak. I remained seated in silence, still feeling an extraordinary impression from what I had just witnessed. Then I jumped up, began applauding and cried. Terrific, Anastasia, encore, bravo, all performers on stage. Anastasia gingerly stepped forth and gave a bow. I kept on shouting, encore, bravo, clapping my hands and stamping my feet. She too livened up. She clapped her hands and cried, encore. Does that mean again? Yes, again and again and again. You did it so marvelously, Anastasia. Better than the singers themselves. Even better than our top stars. I fell silent and began attentively studying Anastasia. I thought of how multifaceted her soul must be if she could infuse her singing performance with so many new splendid clear features she too stood motionless silently and inquiringly looking at me anastasia do you have any song of your own couldn't you sing something of your own something i haven't heard before i could but my song does not have any words would you still like to hear it? Please sing your song. Fine. And she started in singing her most unusual song. Anastasia first screamed like a newborn baby. Then her voice started sounding quiet, tender, and caressing. She stood beneath a tree. Her hands collapsed to her breast. Her head bowed. It was like a lullaby, gently caressing a little one with her voice. Her voice spoke to him of something very tender. Her soft voice, amazingly pure, caused everything around to grow silent. The birds singing, the chirping of the crickets in the grass, 
At that point, Anastasia seemed to take absolute delight in the little one waking from sleep. The sound of rejoicing, rejoicing could be rejoicing could be heard in her voice. The incredible high pitched sounds soared above the earth before taking flight into the heights of infinity. Anastasia's voice first pleaded, then went into battle, and once again caressed the little one and bestowed joy upon all around. I too felt this all-pervading sense of joy, and when she finished her song, I joyfully exclaimed, And now, my dear ladies and gentlemen, a unique and never-to-be-repeated number by the top animal trainer in the world, the most agile, brave, charming trainer, trainer, capable of taming any beast of prey on earth. Behold and tremble. Anastasia positively positively squealed with delight, leaped into the air, clapped her hands in, ryth in rhythm, shouted something, started, started in whistling. Something I could never have imagined began taking place in the glade. First, that she-wolf made her entrance. She leapt out of the bushes and stopped at the edge of the glade, giving a puzzled look around. In the trees furthest from the glade, squirrels sprang from branch to branch. Two eagles circled low overhead while little creatures of some kind rustled in the bushes. With a sharp crackle of dry twigs as he broke and crushed the brushes, a huge bear lumbered out into the glade and stopped, as though embedded in the ground, just short of a Anastasia. The wolf began growling at him disapprovingly since the bear had approached so close to Anastasia without an invitation. Anastasia ran up to, to the bear playfully, stroking his muzzle, then grabbed, by him, then grabbed him by his front paws and stood him up right, judging by the fact that she didn't seem to be Exerting much physical effort in this, the bear himself must have been carrying out her commands according to how much he understood and how he interpreted them. He stood stock still trying to understand what was desired of him. Anastasia took a running leap and grabbing hold of the thick scruff of the bear's neck, did a handstand on his shoulders jumping off again with a somersault on her way down. Then she took the bear by one paw and started to bend over, pulling the bear after her, creating the impression that she was tossing him over her shoulder. This trick would have been impossible if the bear had not been able to do it himself. Anastasia simply guided him. It, took at it looked at first as though the bear was going to fall on Anastasia, but at the last moment, he reached out a paw to the ground and broke his fall. He was no doubt doing everything he could not to harm his mistress or friend. In the meantime, the wolf was become more and more concerned. She was already standing at the place of the action, thrashing from side to side, growling or howling with displeasure. At the edge of the glade, there appeared several more wolves, and when Anastasia was on the point of yet another routine toss of the bear over her shoulder, the bear attempted to do the trick properly, fell over on his side, and remained motionless. At last, the wolf, now at her wit's end, and with a malicious grin, made a leap in the bear's direction. With lighting speed, Anastasia placed herself in the wolf's path. The wolf braked with all four somersault over her back, bumping into Anastasia's leg. Immediately, Anastasia put one hand on the back of the wolf, who obediently crouched to the ground. 
With her other hand, she began waving as she had done that first time with me when I had tried to embrace her without her consent. The forest around us began to make a rustling sound, not threateningly, but with some agitation. The agitation was felt as well in all the big and little creatures jumping, running, and hiding. Anastasia began taking away the agitation. First, <clears throat> she stroked the wolf, slapped her on the back, and sent her off out of the glades as though she were a pet dog. The bear was still lying on his side in an uncomfortable pose like a falling scarecrow. He was probably waiting to see what else was required of him. Anastasia went over to him, made him stand up, stroked his muzzle, and sent him out of the gray like the wolf. Anastasia, blushing and cheerful, ran over and sat down beside me. Breathe in deeply and slowly exhale. I noticed that her breathing all at once became even as though she hadn't been carrying out an extraordinary exercise at all. They do not understand play acting, and they ought not to. It is not entirely a good thing, Anastasia remarked. And she asked me, well, how was I? Do you think I could find any kind of work in your life? You're terrific, Anastasia. But we already have all that in our circus. Trainers show us a lot of interesting tricks with animals. But you don't have a hope of breaking through all the red tape to even get started. There are so many information. There are so many formality and, and machinations to deal with. Machinations to deal with. You don't have any experience in that. The remainder, the remainder of our play consisted in going over possible alternatives. Where could Anastasia get a job in our world? And how would she overcome the formalities in the way? But no easy alternative presented itself. Since Anastasia had neither a resident permit, nor proof of education, and nobody would believe the stories about her origins and the basis of her abilities, no matter how extraordinary they might be. Suddenly, turning serious, Anastasia said, of course, of course, of course I would like to visit one of the big cities again, maybe Moscow, to see how accurate I was in visualizing certain situations from your life. For one thing, I am a complete loss to understand how the dark forces manage to fool women to such a degree that they unwittingly attract men with the charms of their bodies and thereby deprive them of the opportunity of making a real choice to choose someone close to their heart. And then they themselves suffer for not being able to create a real family sense. And once again, she launched into deep and poignant discussion about sex, family, and the upbringing of children. And I could only think, the most incredible thing in all I have seen and heard is her ability to talk about our lifestyle and understand it in such specific details. 